it's Ike from Flipside Music, and welcome to What the FAQ number 16. I'm here with Dylan. Episode 2. Season 2. Season 2. Season 2, episode 16. That's right. Yeah. You know it. Right near getting close to the holidays. <laughs> yeah, last uh, few episodes of 20, or of the this decade, I guess, the 2010s. Yeah, the teens. The teens. 20 the teens. teens. We're already out of the teens. We're out of the uh, creep agers. That's what my grandpa used to call teenagers. The creep agers? Creep agers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not too far off. Yeah. So welcome. Sorry, we're it's early. Yeah, yeah, coffee. Getting yeah. our coffee together, yeah. trying to make sure that we're highly caffeinated for your entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> well, it works if we uh, yeah, keep the system. Yeah, I got. We can't, with we, we can't let our we can't <laughs> let our blood to co caffeine ratio right. <laughs> run too high, otherwise, or too low. Yeah. <laughs> right. Otherwise, it all goes to shit in a handbasket. That's a, in like a caboodle. That, that's what they say, right? Yeah. In a caboodle. All goes to shit in a handbasket. Hand so it must have happened at some point, I guess. What shit in the handbasket? I mean, it I was probably it was really real in the handbasket. Oh yeah, that's it. Shit in the kit and caboodle, whatever caboodle. Yeah, is. well, it, it's, we'll combine them shit and caboodle or something. I don't What's know. a caboodle? <sighs> a dumpling, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Sounds Japanese. If you need a kit does for it, it sound, yeah. does it sound <laughs> far <laughs> east? Yeah, far eastern caboodles. No, caboodles, that doesn't no. sound right. No, it sounds more like. Uh, I don't know. Maybe hey, Indian, anybody knows what Indian, a caboodle yeah. is? Yeah. yeah. If you know and, what a caboodle is, and why do you need free. a kit for your caboodle? Do you need a kit to build a caboodle? Uh, see, that's a thing. Yeah. We're in, <laughs> we're we're investigating all of the world's <laughs> yes. biggest issues. No rocks unturned. Right. <laughs> we gotta know. We gotta know stuff. Yeah. So please let us know what a caboodle is. Yes, and the uh, necessary kit. Is that a corgi and a <laughs> poodle? Caboodle. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Cool. <laughs> All right, let's get right down to the pressing questions. To the pressing questions. All right, you want to do the first one? Sure. All right, Mr. Uh, Yergert had WAP 26. What's up, Jake? Um, this one's a fairly long question, but I know what he's getting at with it, and it definitely comes up in the store a lot. Okay. Uh, so his question is, uh, he says he loves the Johan Segaborn channel, which I do too. If you haven't checked him out, check out Johan's videos. There, yes, the, he's very nice. There's yeah. a lot of things with Marshalls. Check out the Marshalls. You got the oh, Marshalls. Okay. <laughs> um, but he uh, basically Johan does a bunch of really cool, yeah, Marshall demo videos and tests a lot of weird shit. So anyway, uh, he says he loves the Johan Segaborn channel, but it seems like he's splitting hairs lately. He posted a video of different grill cloths on the same amp. And all the weebs said, whoa, it changes the tone so much uh, when Jake feels it doesn't. Um, so he said, do you ever get annoyed by the deep, deep recesses of the online tone cult? Um, he says he feels like that was a fringe example, but it's obviously something that annoys Jake. And I get it because we, mm -hmm. we do get people that, you know, well, yeah, like people that will ask me about the alloys of the strings when they've just started playing or something like like things like that kind of get me where because they've read on the internet about this so many times they right. think it's like this huge thing when they haven't even really gotten out the gate yet right and i think that's where i think i mean you kind of hit the nail on the head right there i think it's when i mean if you're an experienced player yeah and experiments and it has experimented with a lot of different tonalities and pedals and right. amps and this you have and that, an experienced ear too you have an experienced yeah exactly you, your ear is a little bit more tuned in to maybe what you like or what right you know maybe sometimes what you like and what other people don't like are different but you, you at least can tell the difference between the two i think that's that's one situation but when you're kind of a noob still don't get lost in the nuance of you know certain string alloys yes yeah. because honestly it doesn't really matter that much i mean you're you're you know what you know and you like what you like but right sometimes you, you're getting into the minutiae of things and it's not that pressing as far as your overall long-term decisions right Does that makes sense yeah so yeah because we get a lot of customers that they might just be getting going or they might have just started playing and they they end up they're researchers so they you know yeah. well whatever they spend they're more wanting. time looking at youtube videos than practicing right or even reading weird articles about stuff just nitpicking things to death 
and like I know what Jake means like there's a lot of people that are getting to this point where it's just it is you're just nitpicking at things you're not you're spending like you said yeah more time worrying about crap than you are actually playing right and enjoying what you're supposed to be doing which is making music anyway yeah and as far as like the tone of like now i get it like johan likes to just do weird things and yeah, see and what happens oh, but, i'm definitely not but, saying anything against what what he's yeah, doing what, but Jake's people kinda, get really right like go into you know splitting hairs you know. right and getting getting crazy about how much difference it how different it sounds from you know different fabrics right well because something like i've the more well this goes some into fabric it. will yeah will will stop some of the sound transfer that's why right. i use specific things for for amplifiers so i mean i could see that it might change something but it yeah. may not it shouldn't I, change the overall well, don't like change part the, of the tone don't change the freaking grill cloth leave right. the one that's on there but i mean if you're going to go and start like not buy a certain amplifier because you because of a grill cloth, that I, th I think that's fucking stupid. Well, yeah, I think when, yeah. <laughs> I think, you when, know what I mean? I, yeah. I just, I don't know. I think that's just crazy. Just go practice. Right. Worry about that shit later. Because it all yeah. changes, too. When you start right. playing, when you're at home and you're practicing and you're playing in your in your room, or your music room, or your bedroom, or whatever, you take that and go to the stage, it's a whole other ball ballgame. Right, it's and that's even, what I was... You know, you got other challenges yeah. to worry about, and it's like playing live... And then playing at home, two different animals. Well, that's what I was going to say, too, is that overall, especially like something I have I feel like I've learned a little bit as time has gone on, and I'm sure people that are into recording more know this even more, but like the minute details you have going on in, an, in, in a recording in a very specific point. So like most people, like when, you know, they're recording something, whether it's your favorite artist or whatever, that was a very specific moment in time. When you really think about it, like the mic placement, mm -hmm. the sound, the way they were feeling, the the pedals they were using, the settings settings they were using, the amps they were using, it's like this little fixed frozen moment, and people try to are always trying to capture that again. And right. it's like if you move the mic just a little bit, it's it sounds it's different. different. If you move one of your settings just a little bit, it's different. And so even if you had all the weird minute details. And like you even had the gear down to a point, like if you had all of David Gilmore's stuff, you even like, like if you had his like literal him. equipment, you couldn't even sound like exactly like him. And right. that's what I think people well, I mean, get a little too, they go a little too far. And that's probably what I hate the most is like all these people think that you can, if you buy the right shit, you can, you can just do that tone. And right. it's like, if you're not that guy, you're not that guy. Like you can do your best interpretation of it. And that's what you, you know. Yeah. And there's some people that can emulate <clears throat> that. Yeah, and I mean, some people just naturally sound like other people sometimes, but... And some of it is comes down to what I was saying earlier. Right. Yeah, practice. Right. You know, I mean, there's that one dude that's the Hendrix guy. Mm -hmm. What's his name again? Um, ah, I forget his name. He's really, really good, but he's oh, almost yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Right. Uh, on, spot on. But, I mean, that's what that that's what he does. That's right. his thing. Right. Um, well, even, like, I remember watching videos from, like, the Texas Blues Alley guy, and he was saying that, like... In the early part of his career, he literally spent so much time trying to sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan that he was having a difficult time doing anything other than that. And right. then, like, you know, he's made a you know a whole thing out of it. But, like, if that's what you choose to do, you can definitely do it. It's right. just... But if you want if you want to emulate one artist forever, then, right. then you can hone that skill, I think. Right, but, but like, is that ultimately... really... Yeah, is that really what you want to do? I mean, I don't know. I feel like finding yourself somewhere in that other stuff is... is where the the fun is, you got to take some of the. I think you got to take, you got to. Well, we know you take bits and pieces. Every every musician yeah. is a thief, you know. Everybody takes a little bits and pieces mm -hmm. from this and that, and you know, if you take one lick from one artist and you change it by one note, it it's yours. Or you just play it at a different tempo or with a with a swing yeah, to it, it's something a string, or, you know, yeah. it's it, it, it's all different. So I wouldn't. Yeah, it does get aggravating. Well, yeah, and yeah, just I, I would focus say, on the little shit. Maybe. Yeah, and I would say, like, in the shop, it does get a little aggravating with certain customers that just, they're very adamant. Like, I I totally don't mind going on, a, like, a tonal safari and trying to find somebody that tone. But when they get to, like, the de like the minute details, like the pickups, the strings they were using, the, the string gauge they were using, like, that's, I don't know. I feel like that really is splitting hairs because you should, I don't know. That, that's the part that maybe gets me on the consumer side of things, I guess. I think I'm good. I think we're good with that. Yeah.
All right. All right. Let's put enough time on that. Yeah. Uh, ben Coombs asks us. Ben Coombs, our preferred Canadian YouTuber. I'll see you here in like a month, dude. By the way. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Don't worry. I'm getting the NAM passes. There's your. There's your weekly uh, put off. It's <laughs> Don't worry. I'm getting them. I'm getting all the passes set up. So. Okay. So he asks. If you were building a pedal board and you could only use one company's pedals, which company would that be? If we're getting, like, if we're ruling power supplies and crap out of it, which I think we should because that makes it too difficult. Yeah, power supplies. Um, okay. We're not going to do that. Man, that is tough. I could throw one out there. I have a, I have a few leanings, like, for drives, overwhelmingly, I know which one I would choose. But Most likely like if I was it. yeah, if I was gonna explore something else, ah, I don't know, because it's like it's weird. Like I really love Walrus, but I don't actually really I don't play any of theirs. Whereas like Earthquaker, I do have a couple of theirs, and I really over the years I've still even honestly even the plumes. Like, yeah, that's, that thing I was gonna say if we, yeah. had, if we had to pick. Yeah, here's my choice. If we had to pick one company, I would probably pick Earthquaker. Yeah, and, and the reason why is because they have, well, okay, well, see this here, oh, ah, fuck. okay, so because yeah, I'm second <laughs> yeah. guessing myself. No, that's too. This is tough. So, yeah, because for me, I think it would be a toss up between Earthquaker and JHS, and mm, the reason mm, why okay. is yeah, because yeah. they put out a a real wide net as far as what they do as far as pedals. They have really good drives. They have right. really good. Uh, tremolos awesome and delays. reverbs and delays yeah. and it's like you can really build you know a really cool super board from I think either one of those companies so I think either Earthquaker and or JHS you could you could yeah. really dial yeah. in an incredible tone with those two companies yes yeah I agree and I would say I mean it's kind of weird with Earthquaker because some of my favorite ones of theirs have actually been discontinued but but still like Earthquaker I think I don't know I guess my inclination is to go with Earthquaker personally, but JHS, you're right, is equally like the, they have. I would say that be like they're parallel for me. Yeah, because they do have a wide enough net, but because they have a wide enough net, they also have standout ones, which yeah, because yeah, like I think like the Andy Timmons drive is an you know an amazing drive. The Unicorn for your you know chorus Univibe tones is awesome. Yeah. Um, the Panther Cub delay is awesome. So I mean, they definitely do. And then Earthquaker, I mean, Disaster Transport. I've always loved that one for delay and reverb. Ghost Echo, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, I think we're in agreement there. I would say that, you know. I mean, I guess you could Coons, say Strymon, Westward. but Strymon, I just feel, I don't know. We could pick, we could yeah. probably pick a half a dozen companies. Yeah. I mean, Boss, we could, you could pull everything yeah. off of Boss. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. you could do everything with J Rocket. That's another great company that makes incredible drive pedals. Uh, yeah, they're that they're one know. like if you include Sib, then I would definitely go that way because yeah. Sib has the Mr. Echo, so that would at least cover my. But they don't have a to me they don't have a, you know the Boeing is solid, but they don't have a standout reverb other than. Yeah, I mean that does yeah. its job really well. You know. Yeah, if you needed you know, exclusively a spring, like yeah. I would grab that if I had a dry amp, I had a wet up yeah. a little bit with a little verb. That's yeah, like be, an always on reverb. Yeah, yeah, that would be it. I also like. Um, well, as far as the reverb, though, that's where uh, I'm getting off. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting off. Point. So I think the answer would be Earthquaker or JHS. Yeah, yeah, I think so. They would hit enough of those spots for sure. For sure. All right. So Terry Triple G says, "What has been your hottest, most sold amp slash amp brand this year?" Overwhelmingly, the Boss Katana. Yes. I would say we've sold a <clears throat> we've consoled we've consoled we've consoled a we've number consoled of, a number of right, Katanas of, yeah. of Valve amp fans. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, coughed up you know interest. Uh, yeah, I'd say the Katana. We've done really well with the Katana series um, all through the all through the whole range. Uh, and then I would say you know right there with it would be uh, Fender. Yeah, but I mean, I really think, uh, like, in terms of, like, if we're going with one amp, uh, yeah. yeah, the Katana, because, I mean, we, we've sold four or five in one day before with this year with those, so it's been kind of, in terms of Katanas, I feel like, I don't know what exactly our numbers, but we've moved but a it's ton definitely, of those. But yeah. it's definitely, the Katana 50 is overwhelming the, the one that we've sold the most of. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, the Katana Boss amplifier stuff, mm -hmm. Next Tone, 
amps and the other katana stuff. Yep. Um, and then I would say followed after that would be Fender for sure. Yeah. Because we yeah. sold a considerable amount of Fenders this year. Yeah. And those are our two big. If biggest. it was a particular model this year, new and used uh, deluxe reverbs. Yeah. Uh, well. We've had a ton of deluxe reverbs and new and used, like, you know, 70s ones that we've moved. Even super reverbs has been a thing, mm -hmm. like, towards the end of our year here. We've yeah. had like four or five super reverbs move through, but we got two, two left. We got two right now. One's a reissue, one's a 76, and then we sold a 66, 66 just three days ago. Yeah. I and mean, then what an amazing amp. I mean, yeah, that, that one was that one was pretty special. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So that's it. But yeah, for Fender, I would say it would be the blues or the um deluxe reverb. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got a tweed amp, it's like eight hundred bucks. 40 watts, more than enough power for everything you need to do. The yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole nine yards. You know, it's a great, overall great amp. I mean, if that's one that anybody yeah. ever needed to, if you were looking for, you know, a tube amp to kind well, of- That one's still my favorite in the shop to test things on too. Oh, yeah, it, absolutely. It, like it hits great a- middle platform. Yeah, it hits a middle ground. Like you get clean enough to do the fendery stuff that you need to do, but you also get, you know, it doesn't stay clean forever. So. You mm -hmm. get a little, so you like you can hit it with a fuzz, even a fuzz face, and it, it doesn't do that. You know, it doesn't get harsh like a, like a deluxe reverb or a twin would. Because mm -hmm. sometimes deluxe reverbs and twins with a fuzz, if you don't have, you know, a softer fuzz, they can get a little spiky. Yeah, because they're bright already. Right. You're already pushing some of that brightness. And that's right. why I like the deluxes anyway, because they're a little bit right. warmer and, you know, you're yeah. not getting as much, as much chime. Right. Chime, man. All right, so that's that. Next, Derittle. Yeah. Uh, last question is uh, so last week we ended up, yeah, it was last week, right? Last week we ended up talking about the uh, Van Halen, Billy Eilish, Billy Van Eilish, Eilie mm -hmm. Van Halen debacle. Debacle. And uh, so we ended up, uh, well, we had two views, but I still think we more or less agreed. That like yeah, if you're that far removed from something, it yeah, it makes we're sense. giving we're yeah. giving Billy Eilish a pass. Yeah, so you know. Driddle wants to know, kind of on topic with that last one, is uh, who Post Malone is and should he care? And I think he wants to know because Post Malone just did some stuff with Ozzy, so mm -hmm. that was kind of all over the uh, he's interwebs. A, he's a big <clears throat> big artist right now. Yeah, you know, I'm not even familiar I mean, enough. Like, of the two of us, I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like I should be more familiar, but I'm not yeah, at all. Yeah, because you're younger than me. I know, but I'm not at all. Right. Well, it's not really what we listen to. It's like so my, yeah, my, I'm aware of Post Malone because we do music stuff. Yeah. Um, I, and I know that the guy's very talented. Yeah. I so, exist somewhere in like 75. Yeah, and I'm... Where I'm I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just not, my, it's not our genre. I would say it doesn't hurt to explore. It yeah, was, I, I mean... It may, no, know, it may not you be know. your thing at all. Um, but I haven't heard this yet, but I was going to say, I, I usually would really like when artists collab, especially if it's mm -hmm. something pretty different. I mean, I can't say, you know, well, like if Post Malone fans were like, They're, this, I, this Aussie guy is really going to take off. <laughs> it was just another one of those situations, right. kind of like when uh, Kanye West did the thing with Paul McCartney. They're like, well, they oh, really yeah. put this, put this Paul, McCartney Paul McCartney guy McCartney. on the map. <laughs> You know, it's just generational stuff, man. Those, those well, generational, like, even genre, genre national. Yes, genre national. Because <laughs> um, it's like if you're really dedicated to a certain genre, and that's mostly what you've enveloped yourself in, you're not gonna be you, you're, you're not gonna be aware of what's outside of that. And honestly, now it's getting everything's getting so fractured that I don't even like. It's been that way for a considerable yeah. amount of time. Well, the thing is, you got Spotify and and Pandora. And all these other yeah, you're right. There's no a one overarching because yeah. everybody used to have an overarching kind of like the way used to have that, FM you know, radio. And right. then that you had FM radio and they played everything on FM radio. Yeah, you had like the top it, or 40s you, and stuff. Yeah. Or you would have you only had a few. There'd be top forty and FM uh, like rock stations, and then you know more of a soft rock or whatever. But in general, you heard songs everywhere all the time. That's why, yeah. like, there's there's times where some goofy song will be on, and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I know the words to it, and they're like, how do you got? How do you know that? Because you're just on the planet, and shit was in the stores, or right. it was just, or well, in your restaurant, it was just you probably seen the same ones over and over yeah. day after day. Yeah, you know, and um, you're like, yeah, I know that song for no good reason. I don't think that's the same now. I don't think you you hear as as much of the spectrum as you used to. No, I don't you know, feel like. Uh, 
Yup. All right. We got a delivery. Uh, so are we done? We we good? Uh, sorry. I think that was the last question. Hey, there we go. Thanks, dude. What was that? Female? Oh, thanks. <laughs> do that. Do I that, dude. Still nah, dude, dude works. Dude, dude, is, yeah. dude is. Dude's non. Non-denominational. Yeah. Yeah. Does that work? All right. I call I call girls dudes. I know it's just funny, but it's she, all good. She gave me like that raised eyebrow, like what? Oh well, I was. Okay. <laughs> I, I know. See. I know. I couldn't see. No, it was a fair, uh, fair mistake. Fair, yeah, fair cop. Right. Whatever. Fair. <laughs> all right. So where are we at here? Yeah. Um. Okay. So that's it, right? Oh, oh. Last week I mentioned something about. Oh yeah. Uh, his uh, your DIY cliffhanger. Yeah, DIY cliffhanger. We were gonna do a giveaway for my birthday, and I decided not to. Uh, for no better reason than I took that money and decided to buy um, some guitars, and I'm gonna give them away to people that need it locally. So um, we got some schools and stuff. So I kind of I kind of added it up, and we were like, "What were we gonna do for the giveaway?" And I'm sorry for you guys, uh, but what I did was I got 24 um, acoustic guitars. And I'm going to kind of figure out where they're going to go. So that's what I did for my birthday. Instead of doing a giveaway of a single guitar, of a yeah. single guitar to somebody, I decided to cast a wider net. Yeah, and maybe help out some people like more that people. could really need it. We got some schools locally here uh, in parts of town that could use the help on yeah, the music have, program. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we don't have good music programs around here. It's getting better, but I guess it's, yeah. Yeah, it's something that's been uh, on the decline. So, so we got that. And that's what I, so instead I, I decided to go that route instead and just give some shit, give a bunch of stuff and create more really cool guitar players here in the Denver metro and surrounding areas. Yeah. So that's that. Also, another update is this Thursday. Yes. Right here at the shop. Uh, we're having a meet and greet and kind of um, Texas Toastmas. Yes, we're having a Texas Toast Miss. So our our buddies, Matt and Chris from Texas Toast, are coming out. They're going to bring some of their guitars. We're going to shoot the shit about their guitars, and you guys can talk to them if you want to come in, if you're local. Uh, we'll also probably be doing a live stream on the Texas Toast um, YouTube channel. We're okay. going to do, like, maybe a top ten last-minute gifts to give to guitar players, or maybe we'll do, you know, the top ten shittiest <laughs> things you can yeah. give to a guitar player. I don't know. It'll be... We're just kind of actually, it would be pretty good. We should do both. We'll do both. Maybe we'll do both. Yeah, we're, we're gonna wing it, uh, but it's gonna be this Thursday. No, Thursday the 19th, which, yeah, it would be this Thursday. Yeah, the 19th from six to eight. We're basically gonna, just gonna sit here. We're gonna have a few beers. We're gonna have some pizza. We're gonna play guitars, talk guitars, and just hang out. Yeah, so I'll try to get the audio worked out. So hopefully, we can uh, maybe we'll do a test run somewhere before then so yeah. I can make sure the audio is good so we can actually have people playing and mic you know yeah we're gonna see what we can if we, yeah. you know we might just do what we normally do and wing it oh we, we will wing go, it but we may we go will. live yeah. we may not but yeah. we are gonna do a live thing with the texas toast guys on their channel because I, I think we could probably do both right yeah we could turn yeah. all the shit on we'll just do both yeah. yeah so we'll figure it out why not both so, yeah let's do it so tune in and thursday this coming thursday yeah i think that was all of it for the announcements all right announcementary segment i don't know that's I'm not, all kinds of new words yeah we're just making shit up as we go along yeah we're both like not sleeping great so <laughs> new words are abound yeah there's a lot of sleepy <laughs> there's a lot of sleepy drowsy <laughs> nonsense happening yeah and this and plus it's been busy as hell yeah Maybe. coming off of november was pretty yeah uh, busy yeah, yeah november was busy and then this month has really been busy we're down a guy this week so we've we've been pulling extra hours and everything and it's like yeah coffee time all right, well, I think that's it, right? Yep. All right, guys and girls. We'll see you guys. And aliens. Side. You're on the Dr. Phil show.